Hello everyone, and welcome to Under the Rock, where old games feel like new! And today we're going to be doing a Let's Play video game guide of Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth. Wonderful! So, let us continue. Now, before we go on, I'm just going to put it right out there. Like I said, this is a Let's Play slash um, game guide, because there are some little like technical issues through the game that um, may hinder you from playing the game, and we're going to go over how to go around those so you don't miss out on anything. And also, just to keep in mind, I'm during the boring parts, like when I mean like boring, like the long exclusive parts, I'm just going to speed them up and paraphrase what's going on. We hear a call. And so do I, apparently. Um, so, and also, I'm going to probably do some very bad jokes. I'm warning you now, you're going to have to deal with my humor um, throughout this little thing. And also, the gen game tends to like uh, likes to be um, very clean with their videos, and I agree with that um, full heartedly. So I'm going to be blurting out every swear word that's said in the game and any that I may accidentally say. Though I'm going to try to not. I'm going to try to be very good about that. Um, also, this game is rated M for mature for violence, language, suggestive themes, alcohol references, and intense scary moments. So. And I am too. So you may not want to see this if you have like a weak stomach or not very into very gory graphical scenery and such like that. So it's very weird that keeps saying that every time I mention scary stuff. Um, so you may not want to watch this. And also, I have played through this game already, so you're probably not going to get many scare reactions from me. Um, I'll try to reenact how I felt when I first played this game. But, no promises. And like I said, definitely guarantee some very bad jokes uh, along the way. So, let's start a new game. We're going to do Private Investigator, which is normal. And I'm also going to be trying to avoid um, losing sanity because I want to see if we can get the good ending. So, here we go. February 16th, 1922. This is probably now, the best this game has end. looked. I can on fully see system. my so last said, case opened in me a new fear, a, a real fear, especially on my the fear of computer. myself, of what I am, and of what I've always been. And there's All our that I was and is now lost. Hope, purpose, pleasure, Look there, all meaningless. The, huh? rats. I now walk in the shadows there between you. worlds, I love these old and it is there I've finally glimpsed I mean, upon what lives I, I in get the dark that I don't corners know what they were like of the earth. But... I figured they would be a lot nicer looking than, than this, but what do I know? I'm not big in the history. I wonder what that book is he's reading. Okay, we're into the prologue. Uh, just basically, this is going to give us um, some backstory on our character, because this character actually does not appear in Shadows Over Innsmouth, the story that this game is based off of. Um, but the events in this, you can tie to events mentioned in Shadows Over Innsmouth. Um, so if you've read the book, you're going to be like, oh, okay, this is, this is that part that the dude was mentioning in the story and all that. So essentially... 
Um, you'll get a, you'll you you don't get like any grand insight to this game if you've read the book. You just basically get um a little bit of aha moments. Okay, and so we're in six and a half years ago. Okay, it was a journal he was reading. Not many people like this whole old film grain look that they put on all the cutscenes, but I actually kind of enjoyed it. I thought it added character to the story, and it makes sense um, once we've played through the game. Because I do know of some patches that have removed this um, this little filter that they put on all the cutscenes, because they just couldn't stand it. Robert, this had better be good. What's the beef? Sorry, Jack. We had to call. This fellow will only talk to you. Name's Victor Holt. Don't know any. Victor? He's the leader of this weird cult that moved in here a few months back. Got about 20 followers. They've been causing trouble all over town. Stealing, going through folks' trash. Hanging around outside people's homes at all hours. No one ever presses charges, though. They're a screwy bunch. They've got the locals scared. So tonight, we were just passing, you know, doing the normal rounds, when we heard gunshots fired from their property. Gunshots? Hang on there. No one said anything about gunshots. Who have we got out here? Eh, just me, Nichols, and a few new recruits. Well, that's just great. Lead the way, Robert. I better check out this crazy gang of yours. Okay, and now we're in control. And as you can see, we have no on-screen hub. Um, that's because they want to make this a little bit more realistic, so we have to hit the I button to actually get any information on our character throughout this whole game. And it was also another neat, really neat factor. How you the doing, game. kid? Good, sir. Is it true what they say about you? Depends on what they're saying. That you've cracked cases where there was no evidence. <laughs> you shouldn't believe everything you hear. Uh, right. Jack, Officer Nichols will brief you at the top. Be careful. What's taking you so long? Something must be wrong. I think I saw him with Officer Armstrong. Evening, Jack. Glad you could join the freak show. How's it looking, Henry? I don't like this one bit, Jack. Check the alley on the right. Victor Holt's over there in the shadows. He's waiting for you. Can we trust him? Nope, but we've got you covered. You better take it slowly, though. They're a bit twitchy. Wonderful. Be careful, sir. Try to stay calm. Oh. Run, 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 run. Gotta get moving. Back. Okay. Now, just also a warning. My screen, my screen likes to play this game a lot darker than most, so you may find moments where I will not, I just don't see where I'm supposed to go right in front of me. That's because I can't see that well. And if you hear that little heartbeat in the background, that indicates Jack seeing something he doesn't like. And you shouldn't force this him to see This blasphemous image makes me feel uneasy. A powerful painting of some cosmic horror. That's Lovecraft for you, Cosmic Horror. As I continue to translate the necotic fragments, I become more and more eager to contact my Yithian masters. The These Yith. beings truly are gods to us. That is Their not intellect a good and knowledge thing. surpasses well, ours in ways impossible to comprehend. I mean, out of all the I know now just there, how insignificant mankind is in the universe. A doomed and simple species thrown up as a side effect of an experiment by the elder things. It is a blessing that such flawed creatures as ourselves have such a short and limited future. Okay, so now we got that. We can go into our little journal. Okay, this is basically a summarize. I guess me coming to my success after closing the last five cases, you know, blah blah blah. I'm being awesome. Collectoral donors. This is the paper we just read. And 
Mythos and Tombs. Nothing has been collected yet. And so, let us continue on with exploring. This game is very big on the exploring part. So, you got to um, work out and stuff like that. That's an unusual everything. design. Oh, speaking of A depiction of some alien creature. It's not that alien if you really know what you're looking at, surprisingly. This is a habit closed doors that um, you walk into. Hello, Mr. Rat. It's an old stove. Okay. It's too dark to be sure, but that rotting smell tells me these shelves are used for storing food. It's locked. That simple strange. Looks almost like a flaming eye. And that's just a point, ladies and gentlemen. We're not gonna take a closer look because the more save games you take, the um These fellows have gun. one curious art collection. In the barricade door. That sound always creeps me out. And that's what's making it. I better keep my distance from the window, or I'll end up like this nut job. Cutscene time. Don't shoot. I'm unarmed. Ah. We've been expecting you, Mr. Walt. Oh. A key. This should help oh, downstairs. Okay. So, door. Get him out of that bad situation. He doesn't like scary things. Or violent things. Or a lot of many things. So we're just gonna wait here. Until his heart rate goes back down. Because we have to go into this one room to get a 100% completion, but you shouldn't be looking at anything. Don't look. Don't look. Just grab the tone. A diary. This will make interesting reading. What you can find. I can't open it. Okay. Now, boom. Now, good. I got in there without losing any sanity. Let's see what we picked up. Cult members. We've been watching him for now for two months. I can feel my anticipation growing as the day of contact draws near. Victor has yet to divulge his final plan for the bringing Mr. Walters to us. All I know is that we must succeed. The sermon today was inspiring. Victor enlightened us. Uh, um, the experiment below claim one more of order. Another volunteer is needed, but many. The preparations are complete. Victor's plan is in motion. We will arrive soon. He comes. The night finally begins. And basically, this cult has been waiting for me for quite some time to arrive. Which is kind of a little weird. It's unlocked. Unlocked. Another key. Creep out Jack a little bit. I don't understand. I'm in all of these photos. All of them. There must be some kind of mistake. Okay, see, Why now would this they little blurry thing going? That indicates that it uh, must be an old case. So if something you I get this point, you I'm gotta get out with a grudge, of, maybe. Out of the um, situation. I gotta think. So we're gonna get him out of this room so he'll feel better. Okay, Jack, calm down. Calm down. Breathe. Sorry, that's probably really noisy in there. It's unlocked. For nutcases, they seem quite literate. In a Cthulhu game, that sound is a bad It appears sound. to be a private study area. The drawer holds an ancient manuscript. The symbols on the front seem to be written in classical Greek. Let's see what we found. Enlighten 
into a grave. Okay, this is basically a newspaper article talking about this crazy cult and how the police won't do anything, and it's clearly that these followers of the Yith are engaged in unspeakable and criminal acts, so no one should be really hanging out with them. But they do anyway. Let's see, the manuscript... This manuscript looks medieval, but claims to be a translation from classical Greek from a far older work from before the time of the first humans. The pages are stained, faded, and even burned in some places, making reading difficult. The legible sections tell the history of an unthinkable distant end. They speak of a race so strange as to be beyond human comprehension, and wars fought across vast gulfs of time and space. They are concepts so utterly alien that they sound like absolute madness. Time travel flying polyps. Ugh. Flying polyps. Bad things. Mental projection, the great y race of Yith. Again, they're terrible, they're nasty, but I would rather them instead of anything else in the Cthulhu world of Lovecraft. It makes me dizzy just reading it. Again, that moaning sound. There are definitely some strange sounds coming from this side of the room. Yep. And we unfortunately have to go there to continue on with the game. just swell. This is where the game gets a lot of its scare factor in, okay? Dead body on the floor. From the game taking over and just doing whatever it feels like it wants the character to do. Start to freak out. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Come on. Let's go. A crazy med lab with lots of dead people all over the ground. Ah! It's too hot to pick up. Sandy points the crystal is still warm. But if you want to, there's a whole bunch of organs and such in there. And it's all his. That's this why tunnel feels like it's going to collapse at any moment. That's why these rib cages open. Okay, this tunnel feels like it's going to collapse at any moment, which isn't a good sign, but we're still going in anyway. Mm. Alien technology. Wonderful. We are sitting in a room full of alien technology. Whatevs. Crystal in there, and this is crazy, this is crazy, this is crazy, this is crazy, but here we go. Okay, Jack, what have you done? You've opened a portal. You've opened a portal to somewhere. Where could it have been? It can't be anywhere good because you're human, and in Lovecraft's world, humans are never in a good situation. And there they are, people, the great race of Yith. Jack, I hate to say it, but you're screwed. Okay, and this is going to be one of those moments where I'm going to speed up the process and basically give you a gist of what's going on. So, it's been six years since the prologue, but according to Jack, it's only been five months. When he was informed that what happened was is he was found lying on a floor and he did, wasn't seeming to act like himself. And they um, committed him for a little bit. And they were saying that he was experiencing some sort of um, split personality disorder. He was acting like a completely different person, and he started having strange interests, mainly to deal with the occult. He started looking up on books of the occult, a lot of them in languages that he 
himself was not aware of or could read. And it wasn't until five months prior to this moment that this secondary personality seemed to have disappeared. And he's been diagnosed with having amnesia. And that's why, to him, it's only been five months when it's actually been six years. And just recently, this um, he was asked to go to the town of Innsmouth, where he needs to find Brian Burnham. He worked at the First National Grocery Store, and he's disappeared. And they are starting to accuse him of breaking into the store and stealing from the safe. And so Jack Walters has been hired to go to Innsmouth to see what he can find out about this incident. Only one bus goes to Innsmouth, and tomorrow afternoon, I'll be on it. It feels good to have a purpose after five months trying to break through my amnesia. I also feel a little apprehensive. Maybe it's the wild stories about the town, or maybe it's just because I haven't had a case in so long. Okay, so here we go. Today is February 7th, 1922, and we are going to Innsmouth, a place you should never want to go no matter how abandoned it may be. Now, like I said, the ins- the moments in Shadows Over Innsmouth has already Driver, happened in the game. In there. the game. So uh, this is a while the since way. then. So a lot of the stories that this guy may have heard probably are retelling accounts of what the gentleman in Shadows Over Innsmouth told the bus um, local authorities and such after he left the town. Not many come to Innsmouth. But what about trade? Surely the port needs business. Innsmouth has the means to look after alone. Esoteric Order of Dagon. And trust me, if this you would ever go to a place the and there's an Esoteric Order of Dagon, run. Because that is a place you don't want to be near. And actually, um, interesting note, this story, like I pre- mentioned in my previous video about the review of this game, this was the first time, um, Shadows Over Innsmouth, that the creature, the character known as Dagon, was mentioned since his first incarnation in the story Dagon. And, like I said, this game was basically created to create a a bridge that everyone has been asking for with all of his stories. I'm looking for Brian Burnham. Can't help you. Wonderful. Do you know the Burnham lad? He worked. I in the- can't be seen talking to you. I'm looking for Brian. Can't say I noticed what you're saying, stranger. Okay, that's where we gotta go. We just need to wait for the policemen to come out. Yep, there's the esoteric order of Dagon. And yeah, like I was saying, I'm sorry I ramble a little bit. This game was actually this um this book. It was written with the reason why Dagon is mentioned in it is because um. Everyone, all of Lovecraft's fans at the time, were begging and pleading for some kind of connection between all of his stories. And the whole thing was, is so when they, so when they asked him for a connection, his decision was to briefly mention um, Dagon in the story. And that was the first time any of his stories had a connection of any type. And I think after that point is when the trend of making um, stories have slight connections and unify the world started happening. Okay, so we wait for that policeman to go in. We go into sneak mode, which is shift. Basically, if he sees us, he prevents us from going 
further. So we just have to wait for him to pass back. Okay, now he's right behind me. And I just slowly walk this way. It's unlocked. Okay, basically if you see scuff marks across the door, that means you can put something behind it, in front of it, and it's usually a good idea because that usually will stop someone from coming in a little bit longer and give you more time to work. Granted, a lot of the, um, oh crap, he's gonna break through the door moments are scripted. So there's not much. So there's really, like, there a lot of them Assorted are paperwork, scripted. So but nothing of any real interest. Nothing really is big, but it helps. There's a med box. Okay, now that we picked it up. Come on. Okay, now that we got it, we have to... Okay. The tail's empty. And everything is basically gone. There's a bottle of bootleg rum. A typewriter. Invoices and receipts. Nothing of interest. So yeah, because I picked this up and walked through the door, he's now coming. Okay, just fell down into a basement, and perfectly fine. Okay, so uh, let's see. It looks like a diary. It's diary. So whatever. Hey, robbery first national. Hey, Burnham. Well, I agree with the locals on one thing. I shouldn't be stuck in this miserable excuse of a town. I can see why nobody comes here, that's for sure. Another slow day at the store. At first, I thought people were staying away because First National isn't local, but I haven't seen anyone go into any other store either. Come to that, I haven't seen other stores open for business. This place is deader than dead. Still, I won't... It won't be long before I'm out of here, before we're both out of here. She's the one good thing about Innsmouth. We'll burst open old man, waits safe, take a car, and then it's to New York City. Bright lights, nightlife, everything. I'll show her all of it. It's Isn't gotta have some clues. And it has no clues whatsoever. I'm sorry, Jack. Med kit. Okay, and... Bricks with holes. I can feel the air through holes in the brickwork here. And you can see through the holes, Jack. So let's see. We take this ladder and we push. Push, 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 push. Yay! Okay. Go through here. Up through here. Dark room. Various chemicals and apparatus for developing photographs. Old photos of Innsmouth. Most of them have faded beyond recognition. Old photos of Innsmouth. Most of them have faded beyond recognition. Sound door. Not a good sign. Ah. Bullets. Your only friend in this world. Bullets. Okay. It won't open. That door's locked. Nothing of interest. Okay, if you want a little sanity hit, you bust open this door here. Because there's something scary in the corner. And I don't want to take the sanity loss, so I'm not going to see it. But for those who are interested, it's a person who hanged themselves in the corner. These are also very important. You have to keep an eye out for these. 
Um, because they will save your life in some instances, and they could also kill you if you don't pay attention. There have been moments where I'm like, ah, why won't this door open? And then I found out it was bolted, and then I died. Okay. Close the doors. Leave no evidence behind. Hello, Jack. Well, how do you know me? Do I know you? Lucas Mackey. Sorry to startle you. Insmith doesn't get a lot of visitors. New names spread fast. What are you doing in town, Jack? Hear about the missing Burnham boy? Not bad. I'm a private detective. My client's a friend of the Burnhams. Seen the latest press from Arkham? Your boy's been quite busy. Hmm. What about you, Mackey? You're obviously not a local. What's your business in town? <laughs> True enough, Jack. Nothing too exciting, I'm sorry to say. I'm a government factory inspector. They posted me in this rotten hole to check over the old Marsh refinery. The Speaking only of which, I've got an appointment with the manager, Jacob Marsh. Don't. Okay. Maybe I'll catch you later. If it's a Marsh, that's the first friendly don't. face I've seen in this damn town. Bad. I've been in this business long enough to know he's hiding something. Well, yeah. He is, looks well too good for... He looks well too good? What does that mean? He looks too good to be just a factory inspector. And he knows you way too much. He's up to something. Save point. Do, 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 do. I'm just... Okay, it took me a bit, but what we're seeing now, Jack is having a flash, and this is what he's seeing. You better keep your trap shut. I won't tell him anything. Okay. So yeah, we j Jack actually saw that. That wasn't a cut or anything, but it's supposed to be a jump cut scare for um for us. Street signs, very good, important. If you want a little scare, you go down one of these dark alleys and you look through like that first window there. I forget which alley, it's either that one or the next one. But you get a sanity loss from it. I forget why I've done it before and I can't see what it is Jack sees that's freaking him out. I think something moves and it creeps him out. Oh, there's our buddy again. Hello, Mackie. Jack, swell to see you again. Any leads on the Burnham case? Nope. Did you know the lad at all? Just pleasantries. Seemed a nice enough fella, if a little rough around the edges. Strange business, though. I'd never have fingered him as a crook. The First National was a well-run store, a rare thing here in Innsmouth. Okay, Mackie. Everything's a rare Thanks. thing in Innsmouth. Goodbye, Jack. That's normal. Be careful what Excuse you're me. doing. Very careful. Innsmouth's a dangerous place. Not everyone who visits here ends up leaving by the old bus route. This Mackie character knows plenty, but I don't think grilling him for scraps of information is going to crack this case. What do you know about the break-in at the variety store? Only what was in the press. You should speak to Thomas Waite. He owns the joint. Where's the store? It's just on the main square, but it's probably shut now. You should try him at home. Where's his place? I think the Wade's house is over on Dock Street, near the back of the pool house. Thanks, Liz. Though I warn you, it's Miss Driven Old Wade's a bit crazy. He doesn't talk a lot of sense. That's my sort of fella. He sounds just perfect. And that Dock Street line is basically his. Times are tough. Evening. Hello, lady. Uh, the name's Jack Walters. It's a pleasure to meet you, miss. Miss will do for now. Welcome to Innsmouth, Mr. Walters. Thanks, I think. Take my advice. Do what you must and then leave. Tonight, this port does not cater well to visitors. While I appreciate your concern, miss, I can handle lousy hospitality. Very well, Mr. Walters. Hello again. Mr. Walters, 
Look, miss, I only want a conversation. There's no harm in that, right? There's plenty of harm. It's not wise to be seen gossiping with outsiders. How about playing dumb for a few minutes? No. Can you at least tell me if you knew the Burnham lad? He worked in the First National. Look here, Mr. Walters. I can't answer your questions, and your harassment is putting us both in danger. Please, leave me alone. In danger? From whom? The Order. Now go! The Order... She isn't gonna tell me anything useful right now. That's my cue. She isn't gonna tell me anything useful right now. Okay, now we've done everything that we need to set up for the next part, which is way over here. And we're gonna have another story time moment where I'm gonna, where I'm gonna speed up the game footage and paraphrase what's going on. And even in this game, they paraphrase it and they pseudo-alter the information to make it more worthy of a video game story than it actually was. And it makes a little bit more sense. With a good wine piping, with a good wind piping early, in the Solomon's Gallon's mouth. <laughs> my boys, these are And the this joy. actually, ladies and of gentlemen, the is a character the in the story, Shadows of her Kinsmith. And he's basically depicted pretty much the way he is in way. this um, game. Well, no, An old drunkard who does nothing but walk around getting drunk and telling old uh, hot, um, and fish the tales. thunder sounds his gong, and the whirlwinds battle out. And who's that there? Who oh, can you spare a few pennies, young mister? I can give you something for your generosity. Who are you? Zadok, that be my name. Though too few years it now. Zedok Allen! Do you know a Brian Burnham? Just a young'un. Worked over the store. He's gone. Killed, I reckon. Killed? What makes you think that? Them's from out of town running a store. Taking business from the Order of Dagon. They'd not accept that. What else can you tell me about this port? Ye just bring old Zadok a bottle of something nice, and old Zadok will fill your ears. Okay, and this is actually something you have to do that's done in the book. The gentleman won't talk to anybody unless you get him liquored up. So, you got the main character got him liquored up, and Zadok told him a tale. Okay, now what Zadok is going to tell us here is he's going to tell us a story about there was this dude named Obed, Obed Marsh. And at one point, the town was going into disarray and falling down on its luck. The fishing stopped, and basically the town was dying. And Obadiah Marsh went to, um, Obed Marsh, sorry, went to this, um, he heard about this little island that was having tons of fish and all this stuff. And he wanted to figure out what was going on. And so he went out and sailed out, and he found these, um, this um, tribe of savages led by this dude named Chief Wadake and he basically tells him that oh they have better gods and if you start worshipping our gods then maybe they'll bless you with all kinds of favors so Obadiah came back to Innsmouth and he went oh you know I found these new gods and you know they're awesome you know they can give us fish and gold and the lot and over time, the people started to accept Oban Marsh's new religion. And in essence, the town then started becoming um, worshippers of the esoteric order of Dagon. And that's when the gold refinery started kicking up and the fishing got better and all that. And that's generally what's going on here. He mentions in this about a riot. It's That's because um, in this story, because they did slightly alter it, was... Um, Obadiah Marsh was imprisoned, and his followers rebelled, and in the rebellion, they broke him out, and they and the esoteric order of Dagon took control over Innsmouth. And he's just given us a key to the poorhouse, and so let's see what we can find there, and continue on with the game. I think he's had his fill for the night. 
And okay, so now we have a key to more house. So let us be gone. And that is it. Like he's probably the like I said they altered the story just slightly to make it more interesting for a video game arc, and they shortened his story because his story is a little bit longer and a little bit more confusing. But I guess it makes a little bit more sense his version. And up, oh, hey there. She can't get Mr. enough. Mr. Walters, of me. I must speak with you. It's Jack. And just hold on there a minute, sweetheart. Are you going to even tell me your name? My name's Rebecca Lawrence, and unless you want to join Innsmouth's long list of missing, I'd urge you to follow me. Missing, huh? Like Burnham? Of that, I'm not sure. You'd be better off asking the Billingham's daughter, Ruth. She was dating Brian. What? Who's Ruth? Quickly, we don't have much journal, time. Jack. You've got to follow me. Jack. Innsmouth is a strange place. There are yeah, things that have no business me. being here. Foul, reeking things. Strange. Trust me, I'm good with strange. That remains to be seen, but I can help you. My father discovered this strange sign while studying an old manuscript. It seems to ward off the more unusual hey, elements in Innsmouth. A classic Lovecraft symbol. Whenever you find one, you can use it to find a moment of sanctuary. Now, I must leave before we're seen together. I've seen that eye-like symbol somewhere before, but never surrounded by a star. Okay, for those who are not aware, this is the Elder Sign. The Elder Sign is basically this symbol that wards off the greater evils of the universe. Um, there's two different versions. This is the more modern version, recreated by another gentleman. The original by Lovecraft basically looks like a tree branch with small little tree branches coming off of it. And in this game, if you hang around the Elder Sign, enemies are basically warded off. So you can literally just sit back and hang out by an Elder Sign and shoot a lot of enemies um, until they're dead, which is really great. This symbol really helps out with that kind of stuff. So let's keep going. And there's another flash for Jack. Wonderful. And trust me, you do not want to mess with what, what that eyesight is and what that point of view is. It's not fun at all. Okay, and if you want, you can talk to the other people, but you're pretty much going to get the Can't say I know them, stranger. I can't talk to you, stranger. Oh, blah, 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 blah. So, you're not going to get much out of the people here. And you can talk to that policeman if you want, but eh, let's talk to him. 